That's waiting for everybody to get um, get logged in. Again, wanted to just thank everybody for joining us. Let me find my uh, where my piece of piece of paper go. Uh, just wanted to thank everybody for joining in today. We're gonna go ahead and get started here um, today. I have. Um, Today we'll be using my son Caleb here to go through the demonstration of everything that we're going going to be doing. Uh, thinking it's just please uh, just doing a check in. Can everybody see everything going? Miss Tracy, how are you? Good morning. How are you, uh, Coach Huddleston? Hello. How are you, uh, Bob? How you doing? Mrs. Durham Pierce, how are you doing? Just wanted to make sure that we get this camera set up properly in order for us to be able to do what we need to do here. Can I just get a confirmation, a few thumbs up that um, we can see very well? Okay, so just to get started off again, this is Coach Noble. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be flipping back and forth a little bit here. This is Coach Noble with Toss 'Em Up Wrestling Academy. Today, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna go ahead and focus on some some small techniques that we like to do on our own. Um, I will be doing some mental some mental drills today, as far as what we need for our parents to understand, our dad coaches to understand, our mom coaches to understand. I want to touch on a few of those things. And we're also going to get some nice, uh, some a few of the drills in that we like to do. More than anything, if anybody that knows me knows that Coach Noble is a head doctor, so I can uh, I can get a kid mentally and thought to be able to do pretty much what we want him to do, as as well as uh, be able to learn how to wrestle. So let's go ahead and just get started here. Caleb, go ahead and go over. How we always end up starting off our practices here. We're going to do everything on a smaller scale of what we're used to doing. Um, Caleb is going to go ahead and just start circling. He's going to circle. What we usually would do is, is we would do this drill for five minutes. We're going to do everything on a, a abbreviated level. Stay over here on this side, Caleb. Cut the cup, the, the, the circle in half. So first thing we do is just get the blood going. He's kind of already went through a, a small drill session this morning, but um, we're going to just break it down a little bit. While we're doing this right now, again, my name is Coach Derek Noble. I, and this is my son, Caleb Noble. I have been wrestling since I was five years old. I've been coaching for the last 22 years. Caleb himself started wrestling when he was three years old. Caleb is now 12 years old, so he's in his ninth season of wrestling. And just to start off, to let you guys know, you know, there's no secrets to being a successful wrestler. The wrestler that is successful, plain and simply, puts in the work. Uh, let me set this in over here. Okay, Caleb. Next thing that we're going to do here is... You're going to stay right there in that circle over there so I don't have to keep moving my camera. Uh, next thing we're going to do is, is we're going to do a few stretches. So Caleb is going to go through a few of the stretches that we do in the morning. You're just going to do, rather than doing a minute on each stretch, Caleb, you're going to go ahead and just do a 20 seconds. So what I'm doing is giving you guys an abbreviated version of what we like to do um, ourselves at home or in some of the drills that we do in the wrestling room. Um, you can just extend this out with, with time. Again, you should actually be spending about 10 minutes of stretching before any workout. We're not going to do the full 10 minutes because we got a lot of uh, information to cover. Um, go ahead and leg straight out. Knees straight, touch your toes, toes to the ceiling, put your feet together. And try to get your head down as far as it will go. Hold that for a count of five, one, two, three, four, five. Legs spread, down the middle, elbows on the mat, 
Try to crawl your fingers forward. One, two, three, four, five. To the right knee. One, two, three, four, five. To the left knee. One, two, three, four, five. Up to your feet. Arms stretch back. One, two, three, four, five. Other arm. One, two, three, four, five. You guys usually should be uh, holding these drills for counts of 10, just so that you guys know is how we do it. Arms across the body. For our wrestling room, for our wrestling room itself, we typically, the kids, just keep going through it, the kids will do their own stretches on their own. The only time that we come into the room and start dictating what's going on is when we're actually going to get into our mat drilling sessions. So we have our kids trained in our room that when practice begins at 6.15, they come into the room and the first 15 minutes of the, of the, the practice is on their own. And they have it down to a science because they know that if they're not doing what they're supposed to do, then that just makes their practice a whole lot tougher than what it needs to be. Um, you stretched out. How you feeling? So you guys, just so that you know, you would be doing some back bends. Go ahead and do a couple of back bends. You're going to do a couple of cartwheels. And you would be doing these in succession up and down the mat or up and down your living room, back and forth a couple of times. Stay within these two circles over here, son. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is he's all stretched up. Fortunately enough, we've been able to go through some of these. We've, we've had a small workout before we went into our live. Uh, the very first thing that I want to talk to you about, come in whenever I'm talking, Caleb, I just want you to take a knee right there in the middle of the circle. Um, one of the reasons why I feel that my son does well on the wrestling mat, it has a lot to do with how much um, – of his mental game that he has down pat. Um, where that comes from is just a pretty consistent positive reinforcement. Um, what I try to do myself is if Caleb is having a rough day, if Caleb is having a bad day in practice, just like any other coach and any other dad, you know, there's been times when I've just lost it and, and, and not been the person that I'm happy of being. I, I'm a straightforward, honest person. But for the most part, the reason why I believe that he's still in love with the sport for so long and, and just loves to travel and do what we do is because of the positive reinforcements. So when he's doing something wrong in the, myth, in the midst of doing a competition, when I see the wrongs, that's because I haven't done what I was supposed to do. It has absolutely nothing with what he has been doing. It means that I didn't focus on the technique the drill, um, the, the intensity. There was something that me as his coach, his dad and his coach, that I missed out on. So I don't punish or admonish him for making mistakes in wrestling matches. Where, where we have our falling out is um, if we've gone through something on a repetition and he goes out and does his own thing or – some of you coaches and dads and moms can, can see that you can see when your child is afraid to wrestle someone. Those are the times when I do, um, do kind of like a, 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 like a punishment and reward type of demo. For losing matches, we don't go through that. Uh, secondly, when we're in our wrestling room, I am extremely, extremely, extremely encouraging of the kids. So it's tough in our room but it's very positive. So I, f I find something that's very positive that the kids are doing, and I focus in on that. So first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to start off with um, our stance and motion drills. And again, the stance and motion, these drills, the kids pretty much do them on their own. So Caleb is going to go, is jump up, and he's going to go into our stance and motion drills. Um, what that is going to be a combination of is the – five principles or the five laws of wrestling on our feet. And if you guys want to write it down, you can write it down. Um, the first one is head up. Second one is back straight. 
Third one is hips are down. Fourth one is elbows Velcro, hands out. And the fourth one is to be, to, to consistently move your feet. So in these mat drills, he's going to have his head up, back straight, hips down, elbows Velcro to the body, to the side of his body with his hands out, and his feet are moving. Stay inside this circle over here, son. You got to stay inside this circle, right? Here. Yep. So we do that drill. They first start off by just moving around and, and not crossing their feet keeping their head up, watching your opponent's belly button. That's one of the things that some people don't realize is that, you know, all of the hand fakes and the head fakes and the foot fakes, you can eliminate a lot of the reaction that you get off of, off of those as a defensive wrestler in that position by just simply watching your opponent's belly button, keeping your eyes on his stomach. If that stomach comes towards you, everything has to come towards you. That navel comes towards you. He can't have his head and his hands. They can come forward, but without his body coming into you, there's really no strong, solid attack that, uh, that can happen unless you um, don't pay attention to that. So the second thing, third thing that we're going to do now is, is we're going to do um, a few of the drills that we like to do for our variety of attacks. On our feet, we are a club that works very, very well on their feet. I mean, we, we can take you down. So the way that I was raised and taught to wrestle was, if I can take you down, you cannot take me down. If I can escape off the bottom, and you, that, which means that you cannot turn me, I can win 95% of my matches. Now, I've been on that old school, that old school thought process for a long time. Here in the last four or five years, what we've understood is to implement what that is, well, if you choose down because you think you're supposed to get that free point, I'm going to be able to dominate you because you are putting yourself in a defensive position that I'm supposed to be offensive. So we're also turning our kids now at a very high percentage, which means that now I'm taking you down, I'm getting my free point off the bottom, and I'm turning you, which also spreads the gap. Why do we want the gap spread when we're wrestling? We want the gap to be spread in wrestling because, as you all know, the way that we see what our kids are doing and the way that the referee sees it is it can be different from time to time. So if we spread the gap and there's a few bad calls, it still keeps you in an advantage position when it comes to the score, the final score of the match. So you can have three or four different uh, bad calls in a wrestling match, and, and it's the difference of, an, of, of, of opinion, but... If you're ahead of the game that way, you, you kind of still stay on top in your matches. So the very first thing that we're going to do now is we're going to work some, um, some of the techniques that we work in our room. The first one that some of you guys may see us doing, and, you know, they say, what the heck is jangalang, jangalang, jangalang? You know, jangalang is something that I came up with about five years ago. And what it basically is, is when we are in a hyper state of attack. What that means is, is Caleb's going to move, his feet are going to move, his levels are going to change, and his hands are going to be rapidly moving, either attacking your hands, attacking your head, or attacking your elbow, but getting you to react to his body motions in order for us to take a strong attack. That's called jangalang. So again, let me come into the, to the screen here. What, we, what tends to happen here is if we're wrestling, and then Caleb goes into his hyper state of moving and tapping and going and moving and moving and moving. I'm kind of reacting every time he goes, and he's setting me up, which gives him the ability to be able to take a body attack on me. So again, we're here, and he starts jangling. So he's going to reach. And, and in jangling, what we're doing a lot of times is, is it looks very active. We're changing our levels. We're tapping. We're moving. We're going here. We're moving ahead, and we're moving our feet. But all in reality, we're not really doing much of anything except for trying to get a reaction out of this wrestler. So when I come here and I reach here and he moves that leg back, that leaves that foot forward for me to be able to come in and get an attack. If I am moving and hyping and moving, and moving his head and coming over here and I can get him and I can get that head to move and get that foot to come down, then I can actually take an attack. Give me your other foot forward. Or I can't shoot on this. So if I come here and I can move that head and get him to get off of that foot to get that foot there, then I can come in and make an attack on this ankle here. And all of it comes from basically getting 
good foot motion and good hand motion. So go ahead and go. Jangalang. The only thing that I don't like right here is that his arms are flared out. So he's he knows that his elbows, when he reaches, he's supposed to reach from inside out. So when he's cutting and touching, your elbows are supposed to stay down. You never want to have your elbows uh, flared out. All right, so um, one of the best coaches that a, um, a wrestler is ever going to have, um, fortunately enough, a lot of times is... Uh, the wrestler's dad or the wrestler's mom. Never, never any discriminatory. Um, I've got some pretty tough moms in here who are tougher than the dads will ever be. And I got some, some tough coaches in here. Um, the beautiful thing about our organization is, is I'll give you guys a little bit of insight that we only have three wrestlers, three, uh, three coaches in the room, or excuse me, four coaches in the room, include myself, that have ever even wrestled. So um, most of the coaches that you see, when you see us with the barrage of coaches, we got 20 coaches that are, that are with us, they all have paid attention and learned the skill of wrestling and learned the techniques and paid attention to what we've been doing for the last 10 years and have become, some of them, better coaches than I myself, I would say. Um, but there is a rhyme to the reason. If your child knows that you are going to battle, and this young man understands that when we go to battle, he's done what he was supposed to do during the week. He's worked out. He's trained mentally, emotionally, and technically that he's prepared. Having me not always in his corner, he prefers for me to be in his corner. He, he, sometimes he won't even go to the mat without me being there, which is a, a part of still in youth wrestling. It's okay. That's something that we're going to have to work on breaking. Um, but... He knows that when we're battle trained and battle tested, before we go into the wrestling meets, before we go into the building, you know, I ask him what his goals are for the tournament. I ask him what his expect, I ask him, uh, I tell him what my expectations are. And then he also tells me what his expectations are so that we don't have any miscommunication in our, in our, um, in, in our, our battle. So we train consistently to say we go to battles so that we can win the long-term war. We kind of look at as, as wrestling as warfare. So when any time that my son goes inside this small circle right here, any time your child goes inside this small circle, you guys mentally, the first mental thing that I want to talk to you about is setting yourself up to be red light, green light. So there's a red switch and a green switch. Um, when you go inside the large circle, it's kind of like a little head click that you have to know that the sponge is underneath your feet and you're ready to defend your life. I train my kids that every single time that they go to battle and that they go inside that circle, that there is the possibility that, that, that they're really fighting for their life. Because the reality of wrestling is is someone can lift you up, take you back down to the mat the wrong way, you can get severely injured, you could possibly even lose your life in, in, in the sport of wrestling. So you have to consistently be willing to defend yourself and to make sure that you have um, wrestle to the best of your ability to be able to defend yourself. You know, my, my responsibility to my son is every single tournament, I tell him he has a huge responsibility of going out, performing, and coming back over and shaking my hand, knowing that he's done what he was supposed to do. Not winning or losing, but that, that he went out and attempted to do the technical stuff that we've been working, and a lot of times, you know, we've been blessed to know that, you know, he, he's been very successful. So, Few of the drills that we like to do on our feet here with father and son. Um, what I like to do is, is just to get him to move and to react. I've got about 100 pounds on Caleb, but it doesn't matter, guys, you know, because I'm never really putting solid pressure on him. So what I'm going to do here with Caleb here is, is when I reach, he knows. What This drill is called post, post shot. So if I reach here, as I'm reaching, Caleb is going to post that reach hand. He's going to level change. He's going to post it up, and he's going to take a shot. He's just going to come through. Come on up. You don't have to go slow. Um, so, well, thank you for going slow first off. So I want you to reach. When I reach, you post. He posts, he level changes, and he shoots. This is something that a mom, a dad, a dad, and a son can do every single time. So what we do is we just circle here, we move. When I reach, he posts, he shoots. He 
You gotta get in better with that. Ugh. I reach, he posts, and he shoots. Other thing, when I tie, when he when I tie here from this tie position, what we like to work off of this tie position is making sure that our head is in position and there's pressure on this elbow. So there's two or three different things we like to do from here. Sometimes we're pulling the elbow into us. Sometimes we're pushing the elbow away to get it off of us. And then sometimes we're taking this thumb and over this elbow and we're shoving it in the hole, depending on what series that we're working, okay? So today what we're gonna do is, is we're just gonna work on making sure that he has control of this elbow and we're gonna do elbow tie pull and high crotch. Can you see me? You, like, you keep going in and out. Okay, so where am I at? Yeah, right here now? Yeah, stay right there. Okay, so is this where we need to be? Yeah. Okay, so right now what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna do elbow tie, he's gonna pull this elbow toward him, he's gonna pull me into him, and then he's gonna take a high crotch. What you guys can see from this position is, is head position is into the body, we call this, this is a joint and a, 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 um, a guard that we're attacking. Anytime that you're trying to take somebody down to the mat, we're attacking guards. What's keeping him on his feet? We took one of those guards away here, we passed this guard by, and now he has to try to attack the other side of the body. So that means he's going to swish his feet through, and then he's going to get his head pressure into me, up to his feet, step across my body, and he's going to drive me off my base. Okay? So we're going to do a high crotch to a double. So he's going to pull that elbow, he's going to circle me into him, he's going to high crotch, come across, and just move me off my box. So we go hard in, we go hard into the shot, easy on the finish. Good. Go the other way. You guys, gotta, you guys also have to remember that when you're drilling, that you are drilling and making sure that your child knows how to work his shots from both sides of the body. You don't want to have a, a one a, a one dimensional wrestler who can only shoot to one side of the body. With with um, track wrestling and flow wrestling, people can figure you out in an instant. They can watch, for me, I can watch a kid's match in 30 to 45 seconds and figure out where his habits are, what his good habits are, and what his bad habits are, what he likes to do from the bottom, what he likes to do from the top, and I can come up with a simple game plan every single time to kind of just give my child an advantage. It doesn't mean that they're going to win a match, but if you become one-dimensional, it makes it easier for a decent coach that knows about wrestling to be able to scope your child out and to be able to uh, figure out what, what um, a, a game plan of how to attack your wrestler. So we want to make sure that you're learning to do your moves on both sides of the body. So, he's going to go, you're going to post, you're going to pull, he's going to high crotch, come up, and he's going to drive across the body and making sure that he moves me off of my square. Um, what I want you to do on your own right now, let me look and see and make sure that um, I can, uh, let me look and see to make sure that we're in camera focus. I wish I could turn a volume on where somebody could talk if I was missing out on something. Um, it's got to be okay. Um, do me a favor and go grab the, the uh, yoga balls, one of the yoga balls for me. Yep. And then go to my go to my truck and then there's a bag and get there's a, a stick that, that you know the, the, the leg stick. It's like it has a little It's in the bag. It's in the white bag in the back of, in the in back seat where Caleb was sitting. It's uh it's like a pogo stick that you hit that you hit the leg with. I forgot to bring it in. Um what I'll do right now real quick is just give you guys a um a, um A down block drill while we're going to get the other apparatuses. If you guys do have um, at your house, if you guys do have some of these things, this is what I, one of the things I wanted to show you. And you guys got to excuse Coach Noble because I'm all over the place. You know, I get all excited about what I'm doing. But if you have this, if you have a wrestling room, a small wrestling room at your house, this ladder right here, you can do so many drills with this right here to help with your child's footwork and. Um, uh, hand-eye coordination as far as reaching for wrists and controlling wrists as they're reaching for you. This, this does a multitude of things. You know, we do our push-ups from this drill. We do our footwork from this ladder. 
Um, we do our foot speed drills from this ladder. Lots of things. So this is something that you have to put in and implement in. You want to show them real quick a few drills of what we do on this right here? Right now is also a time for you guys, if, if you've been moving around, if you want to just go ahead and get you a drink of water or something, you can go ahead and, and this is all recorded, so you'll be able to go back through it. But Caleb's going to go through a, a series of foot drills that we do on this, this ladder right here. Go ahead. Go. So what he's doing now is we're sprawling outside of the box and getting a foot inside the box, each and every single box. That head is supposed to come up. Good. Got my gym assistant. This is my daughter, Nigeria here. It's just us three here. Hello. This is my daughter, Nigeria. Nigeria wrestled all the way up until the eighth grade herself. She wrestled from age five until age eight. She got to high school and didn't want to wrestle anymore. And she does volleyball, she does softball, and she does basketball. All right, give me one more drill out of there. Okay, do our shuffle drill. So what we do is foot in and foot out, foot in and foot out, foot in and foot out. Doing a mat tap each time you're outside. Doing a mat tap each side you're out. On our feet, guys, um, it's really important to make sure that there's something called sewing your shoulders up. Um, and what sewing your shoulders up does is it keeps you, when you're in a wrestling stance here, once you get in a regular wrestling stance, don't sew your shoulders up. Um, and what I can do to Caleb here is, is I can just pull his head down really easily. But if I have him sew his shoulders up and I pull his head down, what happens is it pulls the whole body toward me. So just by saying, so, you know how like, you know, some of you kids always want to say, so what? So, so, and you hunch your shoulders up. It's the same thing. One of the things in wrestling that I do here, um, that I do in wrestling and, it, and it's just become a natural habit for me is. When I'm wrestling, my head is up, my back is straight, my elbows are in, my hands are open and ready to grab, but my so shoulders are sewed up here. Keeping your position right here with your, hand, with your head up makes you a whole lot stronger. It makes your shot stronger, it makes your defense um, more solid, and it also keeps you in good position. Because when your hands are down, then that makes your back go down sometimes. You can get lazy, but if I sew up, my butt goes down. Keeps everything tight. Okay, give me one more drill on this, this ladder right here, Caleb. Show them some of the push-up drills that we do, how you guys bounce inside and out of there. Yep. So this again, guys, what this drill is doing is it's working on your upper core strength. It's also working on your hand to foot coordination when you're trying to uh, grab for a low single or when you're trying to down block a shot. Go again. One more different drill. What we're just, just basically trying to do is just give them some ideas of what they can do inside their home when they're at home right now. Uh, so, two feet in, two yeah, two feet in, two feet in, out. Go. Now, what he's doing right now, he's hitting two feet inside each box. Staying in an a attack position while he's doing it. You were up a little bit high there. Give me one more drill and we'll go to the next thing. So what we're doing now is just basically our Jenga Lang stance where we're faking and coming in, moving our hands, moving our foot, getting a foot in the box, and making sure that we're getting our cross balance with our opposite side hand because we're leveling down. When you guys are on your feet, there are three levels for you to attack at. So um, if I was to say to Caleb right now, he can go in the circle, and if I tell him to go to level two, I'm going to show you he's going to go to level two. Go to level two. That's our level two attack. Go down to level three. Level three is down on the mat. And then level one, a lot of times in level one, we're up here and we're attacking. This is, we use this a lot in Greco-Roman wrestling in our uh, level one attacking. But you guys got to make sure that you're able to find attacks from all three levels. A level one attack could also be a, a duck under, um, a, a throw by, a slide by. Uh, a level two attack is a blast double. A, um, a high crotch again. A level three could be a 
low single, a misdirect. Got it? All right, so now next. Uh, Nigeria, go over and see if you can. I'm, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you guys a few of the apparatuses that we use um, inside to be able to um, have some fun a little bit, to change it up. Go see if you can find the little balls that we roll. Uh, yeah, tennis ball or, or the, the, the red rubber balls. Um, let me see where the camera is showing. Back up, Caleb. Okay, right there in the middle. Okay, stay there. Okay, so with this right here, what a lot of you parents probably by now would like to do is use this to be able to discipline inside the house and tell the kids, you know, go sit down or go to your room. But what I do with this right here, um, we use this a lot of times. Get in, get in your stance, move back a little bit. So what I use this for is, let's say if I say we're doing sprawl drills. Yeah, that, give me, a, I need two of them. See if you can find another one. So if I hit this, lead, this knee right here, when I'm reaching and he sees me reaching, he needs to move that leg out of the way. So let's go sideways. So what I'm going to do is, is, if I reach there, he moves that leg out of the way and he down blocks it. And he, every single time that I'm able to tap that knee, if I can even get a little skin off of him, each time that I tap it, I get two push-ups out of it. Okay? So now what he's doing right now is he's got his head up, his back straight. But if he was smart, what he would be doing is, is watching my belly button because if my belly button comes close, then he knows that, that I'm getting ready to react. Now he watches the, the, the arm pad out of the peripheral vision, the side vision. So even if I'm faking, and he's in a good position, getting a good position, even if I'm faking, now when my belly button comes in, he should know that he should be able to react, which kind of minimizes how many push-ups that he has to do. Even if I'm going like this and, and jabbing, if my belly button, if I'm out of his strike range, he doesn't have to react no matter what's happening. But if I come through, then he knows to down block it and then circle up and out. So a couple times right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to try to score some points on him here with this, with this dummy here. So it doesn't matter what I do up here. Boom, there's two for me right now. So I got him, I got him thinking over here. So in that drill right there, what I'm doing is, for one, it's fun. It's something different. It's just not dad yelling at him and saying, do a down block, do a down block, do a down block, do it again. What I'm doing is, it's just trying to, I'm getting the same reaction in the same amount of repetition that I'm looking for. But what I'm getting out of them, though, is it's a fun drill. So right now, Caleb, go over there. Give me my six push-ups. You gotta get on the camera so they can see you. Nigeria, is that the only that's the only yoga ball you saw? No, no, no. I need the one that I need one that doesn't have these grips on it. Um, I'm trying to just condense down and show you guys a few things. No, so, get the red one. so the other thing that we can do with this right here is um when I poke at him, basically it's kind of like, it's a, boxing, it's a boxing drill by moving your head. A lot of times what kids will do is they will shy, they will shy down. So when I reach for Caleb's head, what they do is they shy away. Caleb reaches for my head and they go like this and it's shy away. And what I do is, is I get them so used to people, to him just, people just putting stuff on his head right here. What I want him to learn how to do is, is when this comes is that what he does is just bob and weave the, the attack without shying his head away. So I want him to move his head and making sure that he's keeping his head up but watching my belly button, never losing, never losing attack and, and, um, and vision of my stomach here. So that when I do come in, when I decide to come in and get inside his attack range, get your hand and your elbow off your knee, when I get inside his attack range and I get too close, then what we do for this is just, just do a low single drill. So I'm gonna be poking him and he's gonna be moving and as I step in, don't get extended. Don't extend out. That's five push-ups. So we're hitting it here. He's got a level change down to level three, and then he's got to go ahead and shoot in. Then he's got to shoot into it. As I come into his danger zone here, he, he comes in and he attacks. Stay low. He hits down. That's five more push-ups. Here. Go on the foot forward. So as Caleb, I just want to show you guys, as he reaches for me, and I'm weaving, and I'm, he reaches for me, and I've dodged. As his foot comes forward, 
I'm, by, I'm dodging, but when his foot comes forward, I'm double changes and I'm going down low. I'm right up in here, shoulder in, on the heel, turn. And I'm here. And then I'm gonna bounce back up. So, gets that foot forward, pad comes toward me, turn sideways. Pad comes forward, I love to change, I shoot in here, and then I come right back out. And I'm back up. He reaches for me, I love to change, boom, I shoot in. And I'm back up. You wait for that foot to come forward. It comes in, boom. And I'm in. Good job. I don't like this. I don't like this. No, you don't. Put that down. So, now, hold on to that. Everybody at home has a yoga ball. Every single person has a yoga ball. Um, um, Again, what I'm trying to show you guys now, I only got 25 minutes left. I'm just trying to show you guys some drills that you can do. Gets the same amount of work done, keeps it fun for the kids. Um, let's see here. So this first drill that we do is called sprawl ball. Okay. And what that entails basically is I got Caleb. Nigeria, I need you to make sure we're staying on camera, please. I got Caleb moving around. I'm moving this. He's got to keep this ball in front of him. When I move it, he's got to keep it in front of him. And every once in a while, he's going to keep that ball. What he's going to see is, when I'm ready, I throw it to him, boom. He sprawls down, he pops back up, and he just rolls it back to me. So, the purpose of this drill is to make sure that when this guy, when this ball comes into me, that I'm stopping a majority of the shot with my hip. I'm making sure that I am clasping for balance. So when this ball comes into me, I'm stopping it with my hips here, and I'm clasping for balance here. And this is, in a live wrestling match, this is my fingertips going into his armpits and getting my hip bone down. And then also, the leg that he's attacking, the shoelace down to the mat and hip pressure. And stopping the attack. Making sure that I stop his forward motion. The reason why I want this shoelace down on the mat like this is because if he keeps attacking into me, if I put my toe down, it builds me up and it brings the leg in. But if I keep this toe flat and he keeps driving, then he just drives me across the mat and drives me backwards. Another thing I forgot to uh, to um, stress is any time that I am on the wrestling mat, this is how my hands are. The reason why I keep my hands cupped like this is because my hand is much stronger with all five fingers together than they are with them apart. So if I go into a cupped hand cup position right here, you smack your own arm with a hand cup here, and then smack your arm with your fingers uh, flat, you'll see that it hurts a lot more or there's a lot more power behind having your hands cupped like this in comparison to having your hands wide open. So it comes from your cracking down on the head. If you're defending a shot, my hands are stronger this way in a cup drill. So again, you guys gotta excuse Coach Noble because I, 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 I can get all over the place. But again, so the first drill we do is called a straw ball. Uh, the second thing that I like to do here is we do a lot of, um, I'll show you why this, this is being done. So when Caleb shoots in on me, we do a lot of um, non-conventional wrestling in our wrestling room because it's hard to, it's kind of hard to, um, to train against it. So one of the things that I like to show my kids, because I did judo and, and I did very well at judo as well, I try to make sure that I show our kids some fun stuff here. So if we're in a tied up position here or Caleb takes a shot at me and I down block him down, what I teach my kids a lot of time is the next thing that we're going to go into is some of the gymnastics that you got to have and some of the agility that you have to have. So when I down block this head down and I'm on this wrist, you guys also realize that I'm in the beginning of a cartwheel position. So if I have this hand down, rather than pulling it out, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to post on this here and I'm just going to cartwheel over the top of it and come through, and that's a, a beautiful defense. It doesn't matter which hand is forward. This guy comes forward, 
I tie him up. If I want this wrist down, he shoots, he reaches, I grab that wrist. Look, I started my cartwheel already. Here's my first hand there. So watch out. So if I'm going to do a cartwheel, when I do a cartwheel, I come across this way. Same thing that I just did. When I down block this shot, and I down block it, go ahead, shoot. And I down block it, look, I started my cartwheel already. So I got my weight here, but all I need to do is just cartwheel over the top, and then I come around. These are some things that you guys can work on with adding to uh, some of the wow factor when you're wrestling. I know you guys see some of the guys doing that that are in college, but if you start them off doing it in youth wrestling and keep it fun, what actually happens is, you know, I'll be the first to admit, I really do not enjoy the way that my son wrestles. But his style of wrestling is his artistic view of what he thinks wrestling is. I'll give you even more insight. This private right here is probably fourth time or fifth time. This is the fourth or fifth time ever in his life that we've ever even did a personal private. What that says to me is, is a couple of things. He gets a lot of the information that he needs in our broad overview practices. Um, the reason why I personally don't private him that much right now is simply because um, we got a long way to go. We got a very long way to go in wrestling. So right now, if your child is his age, is 12 years old, it doesn't even matter for another, maybe to his junior year in high school, sophomore, junior year in high school. So if he's in the sixth grade right now, you got the sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, you got five years. They understand the sport of wrestling at this point. I can, I can tighten up and get him to be a blast double, a single leg, a, a, a outside single kid in an instant because I have a reward and I have a punishment system, you know? So what kids thrive on and how you keep them in check and how you keep them working is because if you set the goals really, really high with a really high reward and you set the, the, the punishment end of it with, you know, push-ups, sit-ups, wall sits, things of that sort, now, from the mental aspect of everything, I know I, I spoke to you guys and I got about 15 minutes left, 16 minutes left uh, to, to get into some of the mental stuff that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, you know, one of the things, there's a few things that we have in our room. You know, when we're ready to go after it, we say, get that work. So we go after it and we, we want it. So our kids are working really, 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 really hard in this wrestling room. Um, secondly, we got some sand. We say, slow feet don't eat. If you don't move your feet on the wrestling mat, it's, it makes it a lot more difficult for you to be able to score, which means that you keep, your, you keep your matches in tight and close, then you got the high likelihood that you're going to sometimes come up on the short end of the stick. Even if in the wrestling match, you are the better of the two wrestlers, he caught you in a move, caught you, put you to your back, got a quick four points, you win in the match the whole time, and then the next thing you know, you get placed to your back in the last 30 seconds of the match, and you lose the match. Although everyone from the crowd can see that, well, you know what? The most, the more skilled wrestler or the, the kid that probably should have won the match didn't win that match. So what I do with, with Caleb is, is, let's say if we're going to a national event. Um, again, you guys don't go to work for free. You, you just will not go to work for free. You might work for a week or two and not get paid, but after a while, you're going to go into the HR office and say, hey, yo, I haven't gotten my paycheck in like two weeks. What's going on? My, my family's got to eat. I look at my kids going to school, and we choose to do wrestling as their job. So my son's an A-B student, working on getting him to be a straight-A student, but he's definitely an A-B student now. And then when we go to wrestling, his work is he's got to put in the 20, 25 hours worth of week each, each work each week because he's doing eight hours or six hours at school. Six times five is 30. And then he's doing another four hours in the gym, five days out of the week. That's another 20. He's working a full time job. You have got to set up a reward and punishment system for your kids if you're expecting them to have high levels of success and then also to want to do it. So. His rewards is this. There's a couple of things that we do. For my kids, I have them set up on, on a payment plan. My kids bring home straight A's, nothing less than an 85% each week. Each one of my kids deposited into their bank account every single week, they get 20 bucks. 
Some people can't, maybe can't afford that. I know I can't afford that right now. They're not getting paid right now, but $5 a week, $2 a week, some type of a reward system that shows them that they're appreciated for doing the hard work. Some people say, that's what they're supposed to do. Well, you know what? You're supposed to go to work too, but if you weren't getting paid, you wouldn't go to work every day. So that's a high reward. When we go to national events, I set the parameters. It's not about winning or losing. We set the parameters of how many takedowns he's going to get. How long is he going to last on the wrestling mat? How, the total amount of matches, how, how many minutes is he going to be on the wrestling mat? How many near fall points is he going to gain? Can anybody hold him down in a tournament? Can he escape every single time that he's down? We set those parameters, and if he, it doesn't mean, you know, he can lose a match and still win the battle because that was the goal that we had set up for each other. You know, if he says, Dad, no one's going to hold me down today. I'm escaping from everyone. No one's going to hold me down. No one's gonna, that means that no one's going to turn. Cool. What's the reward? I mean, last year, I think my son, he hit me up for some pretty big ticket items. You know, and I'm not saying that you need to give them big ticket items, but you need to set some type of parameter. The reward for them going to the tournaments is they, 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 that, that, that trophy, that medal, that goes to mom. You know, she's put up with all of the yelling, all of the crying, those that are doing weight maintenance, um, uh, dad coming home with a bad attitude, dad coach coming home with a bad attitude because the wrestling room didn't do what they were supposed to do or rough day at work. Mom deserves that, that trophy, that medal, that everything. My son, I can tell you right now, I probably can go over to his bag and there's probably three or four national medals just laying in the bottom of the bag and one of the zippers. I, I started him off at an early age, not really focusing in on the, the mm -hmm. medals and the rewards themselves. You know where my son has the fun part is, is, you know, when we're on our way to the tournaments, when we're at the tournaments, when we're in the hotel, when we're out to eat. He, he, he loves being on the podium when the tournament is over with. And as soon as that's over with, on to the next. He does, we don't covet and, and, and put all these trophies up everywhere over the house. My wife does it, but it, those trophies and those medals mean nothing. They, they, mean, they mean nothing at this point. To, they mean a lot to, 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 to the mom and the dads to a certain degree to just say that they did it, but make sure that you don't covet the awards that the kids re, re receive because I'll tell you right now, this young man is at 12 years old right now, and he's getting ready to go through a rough patch. He's getting ready to go through a rough patch. Most wrestlers quit wrestling from the ages of 12 to 14. That's where you have the highest... Um, ratio of, of loss to of wrestlers. So when he thinks about going to tournaments, he's never been, I, I haven't seen him afraid, uh, maybe last year once or twice, I saw you afraid once or twice. I think I did. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I think I did. I think you were afraid of Super 32? Yeah, I think you were. A couple of times I saw it last year and, and we worked on it. You know, we worked on the mental, the mental aspect of, of wrestling. Let me say this to the dads real quick, and then we'll go through a few more uh, fun drills that we do, and then we'll wrap up. Um, dads, moms, whoever is the, the main uh, disciplinarian, whoever is the person that talks to the child after he's done wrestling. Um, me coming through wrestling, I, I had a very unconventional, it was tough. It was tough. It was tough. I went through it. My father was tough on me. What I'll say to you is this. Couple of rules. No long rides home. What that means is your child competes at a tournament, you get done wrestling, whatever you gotta say to him, um, say it to him inside the arena, say it to him inside the wrestling room, and when you get in the car, don't talk about wrestling. Get in the car, crank the music up, ask him how their day was going, ask him how they got how. Anything but wrestling. No long rides home. You know, this is how the long ride home starts. Can you see me in the picture? Yeah, they can okay. see Okay, so this is how the long ride home starts. You know, you get through a tournament, you get in the car, you know, you throw the bag in the back of the trunk, you start driving, and the very first thing you do, you look over at the kid and you say, you know, and then what comes out of your mouth next is, you shoulda, you coulda, if only you woulda, I'm going to tell you as being a wrestler myself and as having, you know, my third child going through from, from youth wrestling all the way to college level, 
the very worst thing that you can do is give your kids long rides home. You know, handle it at the tournament. If he's done something that I didn't like at the tournament, before we leave the event, I say what I have to say to him. I, I give him the corrections of what needs to be corrected. And then me as his coach, it's my job to put together a game plan that he can go through in order to be able to correct some of the stuff that he did wrong. You will keep your kid more interested in this sport as they get older by just making sure that they know that no matter what, win, lose, or draw, that you appreciate how hard they're working and you understand that nothing is perfect. It's our job to set them up with a game plan. It's our job to set the expectations. It's not our job to be able to mentally break them. If you don't have anything positive to say to your kid, don't say anything to them at all. That's the first thing. Second thing, you somehow have to convince your child that if they don't work hard, they don't get the rewards of being a national champ, of being a state, a state champ, of, of, of having a winning percentage on the wrestling mat. You can say as much as you want to that wrestling is not about winning, it's not about losing. It's all about winning. It's all about losing. Our society is all about winning, all about losing. So quit trying to get away from the fact of there's always going to be a winner, there's always going to be a loser. They grade the kids in school, A, B, C, D. Grade it. Winner, loser. If you don't do right, you get held back. If you do what you're supposed to, you advance to the next grade. Your job. You go to work. You work hard, you show up, you put in the hours, you get promoted, you get more money. If you just come in and do the bare minimum, you stay in the same position, and eventually, five, ten years later, you're making minimum amount of dollars and can't support your family. Winner, loser. Same thing for wrestling. You got to let them to understand and know that if they put in the work, the wins come automatically. They've got to do a regiment. They have got to work out. They've also got to go into the wrestling room, you know, more times often than not. From age four, we train our kids for an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Once they hit six or seven years old, they go into an advanced room where they train for two hours out of the day. And then once they get out of the advanced room and go into the elite room, we train those kids. They get here to the building at 515. Most of them don't leave the building until 830, 9 o'clock at night. It's four hours worth of work. You can say that it's not right, but I'm telling you, we have a proven work track record of if you put in the work, you will find success on the wrestling mat. That being said, let me go ahead and go through a few more fun things. We got about eight minutes to do. Um, thank you for listening to my, my mental part of it. And I'm sure that we'll be doing a lot more. I'll, I'll get into doing more lives. And once we can get our kids back in here, we'll start going back live and showing you guys some of the things that we're doing. I don't mind showing what we're doing in our wrestling room for the simple fact that if I can lay, raise the level of wrestling in our area of wrestling, that means that I don't have to travel as much because everyone around us are doing pretty much the same hard workouts and doing the same type of drills, which the level of wrestling raises up, which means that we can wrestle locally and all be successful. I don't, I don't like spending a third of my income taking these, my kid across the country, but he enjoys it, so that's why I do it. All right, so get the straw ball, Caleb. Show him one more time. Go ahead and go down. You don't, you want that one then? Okay. So I'll show you guys a few things that he does. So in the wrestling room, gymnastics is super duper important. You have to be agile. So um, one of the things that I'll tell you guys that Caleb likes to do with this sprawl ball, and everybody probably pretty much has a yoga ball. If you don't have a yoga ball, um, you have got to get a yoga ball. This, there's so many things that you can do with it. Uh, Caleb, go ahead and show them the reverse flip through when you, th when you jump off the ball. You think you can still do it? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the drills that we do right here is just about getting your balance in order. So you sit on the ball, you bounce, you roll your back across the ball, and then you flip to your feet. That's going to help you out with keeping your balance in order. I already showed you guys the sprawl drill, but this is something, again, that you guys have got to make sure that your kids are doing is being involved in gymnastics. Gymnastics will help your kid. It'll, it'll raise your win percentage by about 50% right off the top is by being agile. Um, again, to show you from the backside what it looks like. And that's all he's doing is just tucking through. 
Um, sometimes in practice, what we do is, uh, Caleb, go ahead, walk on your hands. At the beginning of every single practice, we make the kids get on their hands and they walk from one end of the room to the other. This helps with their hand-eye coordination and their balance. Go ahead and come down. We also do cartwheels. And we also do round-offs. That's when two feet are coming down to the mat. Go ahead and go back. Good job. And then lastly, once you guys graduate, what we do is, is we make for sure that the kids are good tumblers. Go ahead, do a round off back flip. This is something that not everybody's going to be able to do right off the top, but you guys have got to implement at least 10 minutes of gymnastics into your wrestling practices every single day, which is going to help you out, <laughs> which is going to help you out to be able to, um, to uh, get your kids agile and nimble. Okay. Um, one more. Give me a give me a reverse side summy. Reverse. No. Yeah. Do, give me a kick through. Okay. So we we all do this. We call this show out show out time in practice. We come through, and we do a lot of a lot of stuff like that where the kids. I mean, it's big. We, we got sixty or seventy kids in the room, and they're having fun trying to do their little stuff. We had kids that started off, they couldn't do a forward roll at the beginning of the year. And now at this point, what they're doing is, you know, they're doing flip-flop backs. But then I look at their wrestling records from the year before into last, and as they become more agile, they become a whole lot better wrestlers. One last drill. Now this is when you get to the, to the next level, you flip across and come back up to your feet. These are all agile drills that you can work on to keep yourself from to, to getting your balance in order. You just got to you keep working with that ball and you don't need anybody at home to do these drills. Good. OK, so, Caleb, quickly enough here, everybody, I know we're um, we got about three or four minutes. What I want you to do is is for take a knee for um, the kids that are youth wrestlers and that are wrestling right now, um, if you had any words of advice for them, you know, remembering from the time when you started wrestling up to this point right now, what's some good words of advice you would give to the kids? Don't get discouraged by the people, what they say. Um, think of what one thing that you want to do, that you want to accomplish in your matches. And as soon as you accomplish it, and when your dad's yapping in your ear, all you have to say, listen, then all you have to think in your head, did I accomplish that? And if you if you did, it was like some, man, I think I, I think I did a good, a good match. But your dad says also um, other word, then just listen to him, and your dad's going to be the best coach of your life. Okay. For all your years of wrestling, what is the thing that you dislike the most about wrestling? And parents, you know what? I don't ask these questions often, so I'm learning as just as much as you guys are. But if you can form a, 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 um, a good relationship with your kids, um, uh, me and my son have this thing called, it's called man talk. So if my son comes to me and he says, man talk, dad, man talk, that means that there's something really important. He doesn't need to find the right words to say what he needs to say. He can just say it however the heck he needs to say it to me because it's something important and it's something detrimental that's going to make a big difference in his life. He says that to me, and I know for sure that I just have to stop what I'm doing, pull over the car, and I got to listen. So what's the one thing about all of wrestling that you probably can say that you don't like the most? Practice. Practice. What is the thing about wrestling that you love the most? Um, probably when you get into a good match at, um, at a tournament, like you get into an overtime match, you, um, that's what gets me um, going. It gets me like I gotta get a good sense of urgency. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So for everybody that's here right now, um, this is Coach Noble. Coach Derek Noble, Toss'em Up Wrestling Academy, and also Caleb Noble, Toss'em Up Wrestling Academy, and our assistant, Nigeria Noble, Toss'em Up Wrestling Academy. 
Um, I'll give you guys a small quick tour of what we got. For those of you guys that have never seen our facility, um, this is our, our wrestling room here. And then um, this is where, genuinely, where all the real magic happens over here. This is, we have every apparatus in here in this facility that if you wanted to train to be an Olympian, you can become an Olympian. We don't have steps in here, so we build steps. I grew up running steps my whole life. Um, we have our, what we call our, our, wall, our wall of torture here, where we have a few apparatuses where our um, ropes are at. We have our plyo boxes. You know, still got to have a basketball rim in here. This we use a lot. We use these punching bags quite a lot. We have gloves here, um, and we have uh, tires. The other thing that I can also suggest to you guys is, is invest in a good, if, depending on how big your club is, invest in about 10 pairs of boxing gloves. You know, there's times when we're inside this wrestling room and, you know, kids are going to be kids. They're bickering back and forth. You know, one guy's got his butt sitting on his shoulders. You know, at least five to six times out of the year, we have boxing tournaments amongst our club where the kids... What, what the boxing does is if, if you can get them to box and, and, and get used to getting hit in the head and the face, when someone cracks down on their head or when someone posts on their forehead, it means nothing to them because they're used to getting bopped in the forehead, you know, with a glove or getting punched in the nose with a glove where someone comes in with their head. It's nothing because they're used to getting punched. So that's another suggestion. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and log out here. I really appreciate you guys um, tuning in. For those of you guys that know, I don't know if you've seen our Facebook post. Um, I am in a dire situation right now. I've got this big 10,000 square foot building. I'm not able to run my practices. Um, I give all of the money that comes in for the team fees that are, that are collected to keep this building up and running. I've had this building up and running for the past six years. For um, any of you guys that are in a situation to be able to help us reach our goal, and we're almost there, that, that right there is going to be able to, um, excuse me. Um, that is going to give us the ability to be able to keep the doors open for at least the next three months. I've done what I was supposed to do as far as applying for um, the SBA loans and so forth, and we're just waiting to see what's going to happen with that. But if you guys um, see it fit to be able to help us make it to our goal, which I think we're almost there, but any little bit more can count to keep us um, keep our doors open while we're not able to be in the facility. Right now, I'm in the facility because I own it, and these are my children that are here, so we're, you know, we're together and we're in the same household. But other than that, um, um, we appreciate you guys. So go to our Toss em Up Academy, Toss em Up Wrestling Academy page, or go to my personal page, Derek Noble, to uh, try to donate if you guys are able to do so. Again, we'll see you guys soon. I can't wait till we get back on the wrestling mat. I'm looking forward to getting back to it. My passion is still within this wrestling room. I've been going crazy a little bit, getting cabin fever, not being able to be in the wrestling room the first time in 22 years. But we're all going to make it through this. Lastly, and most importantly, I say this to you guys. Stop counting the days and start making the days count. Stop counting the days, make the days count. From my heart to yours, I love you guys. Our wrestling family is stronger together than we are apart. We got some great things coming, coming in the future here, and I look forward to making sure that this next generation of wrestlers, we put ourselves on the map, not just here in the United States, but across the world. Talk to you guys soon. Coach Noble checking out. Thank you, guys.